So one of the friends of uh, the channel on uh, Psychics Explained has brought to my attention someone named Dolores Cannon. I, I'm shocked. I've never heard of her before. <laughs> There's so many um, different varieties out there of people who are um, into the mediumship world, psychic world. Um, I've only been doing this maybe 20 years, but for some reason, this one has not crossed my path. Or if she has, it went right past me. And the interesting thing is, as I'm learning about her, is that she's from where my family's from in... Um, well, we're from Arkansas, right by the Ozarks, but um, she's from Missouri, Missouri, which is where my family's partly part of my family is from. So it's really interesting to, to as I'm looking at her and um, listening to her and I'm thinking this could be one of my relatives, one of my close family relatives, because just right there. Anyway, so let's let's just look at this woman a little bit, because I hadn't been aware of her. Maybe you aren't aware of her either. And I asked my team, the Operation Real Skeptics team, about her. And uh, one of the women was telling me that she is um, at the heart of a lot of different, um, uh, in this world, let me see if I can get her quote. She says, she died rather mysteriously, and she's at the basis of all current New Age stuff. So maybe that's why I'm really not abreast of who this woman is, because I'm not really interested in the New Age stuff it's such a giant genre. Now I'm not going to show any of her videos or debunk any of your videos or, or explain any of her videos or anything of the sort. Number one, they're very copyright heavy worried. And uh, there's a reason for that. I think um, number two, there's, she's so prolific that there's no way I could possibly cover all or even some of this. And I, I just want to show you some of these things that I'm finding about this woman. So <laughs> very interesting. So reading through this, um, apparently she's born in the 1930s. She got married. Her husband had a career in the Navy. They traveled all over the world. And then um, he had a car accident. Oh, well, first is, that uh, during the 60s and the 70s, reincarnation was this really big deal. And um, she started she started out with this thing called hypno hypnotherapy and hypnosis therapy. So using therapy to help you out, like to convince you not to smoke or to have bad habits or to lose weight or to whatever, whatever reason you would go to a hypnotherapist. And she thought that, um, you know, doing these things would be um, beneficial to her health and her husband's health, I guess, and the people around her. So they started out with that. And then as she got into this hypnosis world and she started um, believing she was doing a really good job with hypnosis, her and her husband... Then they got into this idea of reincarnation. So that was 1968. And this is because they met up with a person who she was giving hypnotherapy, hypnosis to. And that person started to tell her about life regressions and how she'd lived another life. And her and her husband got very excited about that. And they thought that was evidence of reincarnation and they um she said she was living in the 1920s as a flapper and so they they this is from her website this is from the doris cannon website so i'm not she said i'm not interpreting this too much it says that the woman literally transformed into a different personality with different vocal patterns and different body mannerisms so acting, mental illness, somebody wants to have a lot of attention, somebody who's, who, for, somebody, it's called acting, right? You see people do this on the stage all the time. They have different mannerisms, different vocalizations. So they took it as being 
real, that she really was um, transformed into a different personality. Now, I remember watching all about, um, what was it? Uh, Three Faces of Eve and Sybil. Oh my gosh, those were so convincing when I was growing up. I think I even had one of the books. And only when I got older and started realizing what Hollywood produced and seemed so real to me that this woman has three distinct personalities and or more in the case of Sybil, I think. Wasn't it Sybil that had multiple personalities? And so that these people would have, I, I don't know why in my mind, I didn't really quite understand. I was quite gullible, young, that, that this was Hollywood that's producing this to sell to us. And that people pretend for various reasons, or maybe they really do think they have multiple personalities. Anyway, so Dolores and her husband said, okay, she has, we believe that she's got different personalities. So they regressed her and regressed her, and she had all these other personalities and all these other experiences. And they they thought that this was evidence because the woman was saying this is true. And they they went back and they looked at the time that um, when a person said, I live in this time, I live at this place or whatever. So supposedly Dolores and her husband did all this research of that time and place and it made sense and they considered that evidence. Okay, well, you know, I don't think that would be considered really good evidence now. I mean, we could do it's too it's too vague, right? I lived in a time and a place. Well, okay. Her husband's almost killed in an automobile accident and he has, he's in a wheelchair and that he's a partial amputee. So at that point, then they end up deciding that they're going to move to Arkansas. And then while they're there, then they start doing more hypnosis and then they start getting into the past lives of all sorts of their different clients. And then they learned that um, they discovered other things. And um, she, she made this technique called the subconscious and the quantum healing hypnosis technique that's registered. She got a little R beside it on her website. And so so. <laughs> She, after many years of practice and investigation, she eventually realized that the memories of past lives and additional information she was receiving through clients was being supplies, supplied by a much larger, more powerful, and more knowledgeable portion of her clients' selves, which her conscious minds were completely unaware existed. This is on her website. And she feels that it was part of every person's mind and in their consciousness. And... Um, then she opened up her own publishing company, Ozark Mountain Publishing, and she publishes other people's works and so on. And then, oh my gosh, there was something here. Let me see really quick if I can find it again. She, she developed all this without having to have the benefit of anybody looking into it. No, no, um, um, nobody who was, I, I don't know, how do you get to be trained in this kind of stuff? But there was no science in it. It was, it was because it was just her and her husband and her, her people around her that were in, believers of this ability of hers. I guess she thinks we all have that ability. Oh, here it is. Um, because metaphysics was still decades away, there were simply no books, instructions, or guides or resources she could use. So that proved to be a blessing in disguise because it allowed them to write their own set of rules, develop their own technique without oversight from an established medical body. And that meant that they were not limited or confined in their approach in any way. And nobody was there to tell them what to do. Now, that's a red flag for me. Maybe not to you, um, where you get to write your own rules and decide what it is that all, this all means and and that if somebody tells you that they lived in another life, that you believe that they lived in another life. And okay. So <laughs> anyway, I'm laughing because I can't believe what I'm reading. Um, 
then she starts getting into other things. Um, Nostradamus starts contacting her. And um, somebody had regressed in a life, past life, to being a student of Nostradamus. And he, and because of that, then I guess that was her thing is Nostradamus for a very long time, interpreting him or hanging out with him, or I don't know. And then in the 1980s, she's got into UFOs, extraterrestrials, and life on other planets. Okay, then. So then they do, MUFON got involved. She started going to MUFON um, meetings. She was asked to conduct a session with a woman who felt she was having abduction ab abduction experiences but lacked the ability to remember anything in detail. So then she gets into that and she's writing more books and on and on and on and on. So she dies in 2014, I think is when she dies. And her daughter who had been a, um, a nurse, a medical nurse, supposedly trained in registered nurse. So she supposedly had some kind of training she decided she'd give up that career and she went into now doing what her mother had done and, and taking that on. Okay. So, um, I want to show you that I, I'm not even sure how to explain this because it's a belief, right? We, if you believe that these things are possible, then there's no, and you feel, and you feel inside you that this is happening or that you've had these experiences, then there's nothing that a skeptic like myself can say that is going to convince somebody otherwise, because this is, this is a belief. And the idea that they feel like they have some kind of evidence. Now, the evidence that they would have for life in, on other planets or extraterrestrials visiting Earth or Nostradamus actually predicting anything or uh, past life or um, regression, any of that stuff, that what they consider the evidence is is not what the world of science would ever consider it as evidence. They're, they're, we're, it's like we're talking two different languages. It's completely different i know we're both speaking english but those words and the meanings of those words are not the same and to a whole group of people probably millions of followers of this woman they believe that they're having these experiences and that she has answers for them and that um they want to these are questions they have about life and and about themselves that they want to have answered and and they they feel i guess that they're getting something out of it whether they you know they really do or they think they do or i don't know but let me show you what this looks like this this world there's massive amounts of money in this look at all these books I mean, she's made a fortune. Well, her and her family is making a fortune off of this. This is, you know, they're very cautious about copyright. You can't play any of their videos. Um, but this, she's got a publishing company. And there's all these books. And the books are, again, what I in the scientific community would never consider evidence. Um, these are these are just what people are writing. And I, I don't know how you how do you um, curate something like that? Does anybody who comes to you who says that they have had an experience or they've had a, um, a, a message from somebody or something, is that, are you just going to believe what they say because they said it and they seem credible? It's, it's, it's the old maxim of unicorn wings. And I'm not sure if I can remember who it is who, who coined this phrase, but, you know, we can sit and discuss for hours about unicorns having wings or not having wings. Do unicorns have wings? Do unicorns not have wings? Well, when the question really should come down to, do unicorns exist? 
Because before you answer that question, why are we discussing if they have wings or not? Because it could, it's a non-existent creature, right? So, goodness gracious. <laughs> and multiple languages as well. Really incredible. And then here's her YouTube channel. There's tons and tons and tons of, of YouTube videos. And they're calling her a world-renowned author, speaker, hypnotherapist, and past life regressionist who transitioned from this world to the next. And that's right. She is a world-renowned author, speaker, hypnotherapist, and past life regressionist. That's her thing. Uh, whether you want to say she transitioned from this world or not, well, that's up to her. But, you know... Here's her, here's, she is on TikTok. Incredible, just incredible, very prolific content. There, there must be so much money in this. And I'm not knocking it because just because the skeptic world and the science world, we sure as heck don't make money <laughs> from this world. I guarantee you that. Uh <laughs> So she's found a way of making money and she says she's helping people. Well, she's dead now. I, I mean, I'm just thinking about, you now bear with me here for a moment. I'm thinking about Lori Daybell. Okay. Do you guys have been following that case that she just was found guilty of murdering her children and her, her, her uh, lover's wife? Okay. She conspired to murder her lover's wife. She just found guilty just the other day at the time that I'm making this video. Follow that case. Now she's a, she's from the Latter-day Saints, the LDS, the, we call them Mormons, but I think they're calling themselves the Latter-day Saints now. And she was supposedly at the time for a very long time, a part of the, the, their church where she was baptized into it she was raised into it and apparently practiced the tenets of it and then at some point things went wrong obviously they went wrong because her children were murdered but she they slipped off into this other belief structure she met this this guy who wrote all these books about prepping and about past lives and um uh, vortexes and all kinds of things that that the church does not the mormon church does not have anything to do with and at a certain point they made the decision that they had to eliminate a bunch of people out of their lives her kids and um her ex-husband well he was her husband at the time and on and on but the people she's been guilty found guilty for are her two children which were murdered and um the wife of the man who's writing these doomsday doomsday love story books and she had they had a bunch of followers so he would say i am the reincarnated um son of or brother of jesus or whatever he would say these things and he had charisma and people would go really and <laughs> you're you you are because you say you are, then you are. And what ends up happening is they they get all these other beliefs, like they're putting they're putting like a a darkness in somebody, and they're making it so that they're going to die on their own, and they're they're having these um, uh, distant prayers to to make them something happen to them. It's just all kinds of stuff. But what happened, what I'm trying to say is that when you start veering off to a point where you're getting away from traditional mainstream hypnotherapy, I guess, um, and uh, hypnosis for helping people to lose weight or stop smoking or give up alcohol or whatever it is you're doing, um, and you start believing people just because they say, um, and, and you feel like they have so much charisma and why would they be making that up? Um, and, and you lose that ability to, to say, wait a minute, there's something wrong with this story. Why should I believe them? Um, it, on, in the testimony for the Lori Dow, uh, Daybell case, one of the women who was up on the stand who was a follower of, of this little 
offshoot of the Mormon church that Lori and her and Chad Daybell had created. And on the stand, she's sworn in and everything. The woman says, um, oh, I believe that she said that she was a friend of Jesus. She'd met Jesus personally. And the prophet Morari, I can't think of his name. I can't think of it off the top of my hand, had actually contacted Lori. And he was telling her these things that she had been the daughter of somebody in the past. And the attorney, you know, asked this woman on the stand, he says, you believe that? And she says, well, yeah, that's really serious. That's really a big deal. If Jesus, if she says Jesus is talking to her, then Jesus is talking to her. Because why would you lie about something like that? Why would you make that up? Well, I can think of a lot of reasons why I would lie and make it up. Maybe Lori Daybell believed that she was talking to Jesus. I don't know. But to the followers of these people, they just believed it because she said so. Because she was credible and other people believed her. So those people over there, they're pretty cool and they believe her. So therefore, I should believe her. I'm just, it's just mind-boggling just mind-boggling i'm going to go back to one more thing and this will make sense i remember years and years and years and years ago um, i was listening to somebody talking about going on a ghost hunt and they're in they're going through this dark area of course because the lights are all turned off because you know spooky and they're going through and they're with a group of people and somebody gets scratched, like their arm is scratched. And they come out and their arm is scratched. And you can see the, the red mark right there where it's scratched. And they said it was a demon that did that to you. And, you know, I thought, you're in a room with a bunch of people. You're in a building with the lights out. How do you know you didn't just scratch it against the wall? or something was, something was sticking into the area where you're walking by, I mean, it scratched you. And they're like, oh, no, no, that couldn't have been, it couldn't have been it. It had to be, it had to be a demon. I'm like, okay, well, how do you know somebody with you or on that tour or whatever didn't scratch you to make the experience more exciting or to make it so that you're more convinced that it was a demon or whatever? And she says, no way. There's no one in that group that would have scratched me. There's no way anybody would have done that to me because these are all my friends or whatever reason she gave. There's just no way somebody would do that. So to her, it's going back to the unicorn wings again. She believed that it was more likely that a demon, a demon from Bible, I guess, reached out and scratched her in this dark old building and not anybody else on there, but it would be a demon. I don't even know where you would go with that. How can you even explain to somebody who believes that to that level that they're more likely to that is more likely to them to be demons and i'm thinking well how do you know it was a demon not a witch not a smurf not a not a i don't know an alien from another planet i mean if you're going to go with you're going to go with a um a demon why don't you just say it was a unicorn horn that scratched her in the dark i mean that might as well have been the answer but no it was a demon she knew it and she had no way of knowing that or saying why or how she knew or she just knew that because I guess she was told that by her friends. So I've been asked to look into this Doris Cannon person by a friend on the channel who um, is there. Hi, by the way, you know who you are. And 
she told me, she says, I, I can't find any criticism of this person. I can't find anything. And I looked too, and I saw she doesn't have a Wikipedia page, which is, you know, a red flag, because if you're supposed to be able to do all these amazing things, you would at least think that you would be one of the most powerful people in the world and would have at least a Wikipedia page. Um, and I mean, she's got 400,000 views on her channel. She's been dead years on her YouTube channel. I'm at like 521. So what do I know? <laughs> and um, I, I don't see how you can hang your hat on anything with this woman. What would, what would you, what would be the article you would write? What would be the, what would be the investigation you would do with her? Because all of the, everything, everything is about a belief in something with, with having what we would call in the science world or skeptic world, no evidence. There's, I mean, I could talk about seeing fairies in my garden and because if I was credible and I had a, the personality, some sort of personal charisma that would make people believe that and film videos. And I was in, and I told people that I saw fairies in my garden and, and I got a lot of following of people who said, yeah, you have fairies in the garden. I've seen them too. There's fairies in my garden also. And you get a lot of people who buy into that. And then other people go, well, if all these people say that there's fairies in their garden, maybe there's fairies in my garden. And why not? Why wouldn't there be fairies in the garden? And eventually, you know, I've got 400,000 followers on my YouTube channel and not 521. <laughs> so... I don't even know where you would go to to explore somebody like this who has this deep, um, prolific um, writings, videos, followers. Unless people came forward and said, I've been harmed in this way because of this, which I've never heard of anybody. Um, they're adults, they're paying money, they're they're buying the books, they're getting their hypotherapy, they're getting their regression, they're believing their past lives, they're learning about all these things that in the science world sounds like nonsense. But then again, so does fairies in the garden, right? If you like this channel and if you like these discussions and these um, detailed breakdowns of medium readings, I know this isn't a medium reading, but this is something that somebody did ask me to look into. Please like, please subscribe, please share, please comment, and please reach out to me and give me more, um, if more ideas, things you'd like to cover, things that you're interested in, things you want to have more knowledge of. I know this wasn't a breakdown of a reading because I can't even imagine where I would start. I mean, Anyway, I thought it was interesting to know about her. I, I think they could make a nice Hollywood movie about this woman's life. Boy, um, I'm sure she must have been quite a personality. And um, I'd like to know more about this mysterious death, apparently, that she had uh, that happened to her in 2014. Because I don't know. But like I said, this woman could be one of my aunts. She looks like she could be in the same part of the world and very interesting. Very, very interesting. So thank you all for staying tuned and hanging out with me for a little bit on this kind of deep, not even a deep dive, a, a tiny dive into the life of this woman and, and who she was. I appreciate you all being here and I appreciate your comments. Thanks.